You're with Mickey B, and you're on the Jukebox Review right here Tuesday night, 8 o'clock in New York with the scene of New York behind us. Let me tell you what a beautiful set it is tonight. And, of course, temperatures will be going down again, I think, today into the low teens or possibly in the single-digit numbers. But we don't care because it may be cold outside, but it's hot here in the studio, ready for some good rock and roll. And tonight we're going to feature something a little bit different. Every week we come up with some kind of theme. Tonight, it's confusion about was the group called a name or did they have a single guy before the name or did the name come first and then the single guy after it? What do I mean by that? My expert, Pearl Orante, the historian of rock and roll, will tell you what we're talking about. Paul? Hey, Mickey. First of all, New York City's behind us. I like that. Isn't that beautiful? It's a nice look behind us. So it is. That means we've got millions of viewers listening That's tonight. right. You know that? Now, Mickey, very interesting what we're talking about here. A lot of groups, for example... Little Anthony and the Imperials were always Little Anthony and the Imperials. Wait, wait, Paul, i got to correct you on that because okay. I think one of their first albums that came out was the Imperials featuring Little, Little Anthony. Anthony. But then later on, I think uh, uh, the DJ, Alan, Alan Freed, Freed, gave him the name Little oh. Anthony because he was a little guy, right. called him Little Anthony, and then the name stood as Little Anthony. Exactly. But then you have a group who, like back in the 50s, the channels was just the channels. In later years, it became Earl Lewis and the Earl Lewis and the Channels, absolutely. And there were so many different groups like that. Now, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, who I thought was Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. Well, Frankie Lyman's Teenagers first, right? No, it was the Teenagers featuring Frankie Lyman. Wow. Then they became Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. So tonight, we're going to be doing all of this great work on introducing all of these great groups and how their name changed, changed when right, it changed at all. Very interesting. One of the guys whose name never changed was a guy who had music in a movie called The Blackboard Jungle. Right. Song went to number one, the first Billboard hit record. And uh, it also featured Sidney Portier, right. who was on the, uh, the awards the other night, the Oscars. That was a great show. What yeah. a great show. And, and Sidney is better than ever. And he was in that movie as, uh, I forgot the name. What did they call that? Oh, uh, I forget. Daddy-O. Right, right, exactly. They called right? him yep, Daddy-O. Daddy That's right. And this song went number one in the country. Let's watch it. Here's Bill Haley. And the Comets. This man has sold millions upon millions upon millions of records all over the world. He's put together an album of the 12 great rock and roll songs that he could think of. One of them had to be his because this was probably one of the biggest records of all time. It's, it, it's six years old now and just as new as today. This one's called Rock Around the Clock. Bill Haley. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around six o'clock tonight. Put this bad vibe so join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. We're going to rock, 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 rock till the rock daylight. We're going to rock, going to rock around the clock tonight. When the clock strikes two, three, and four.
Boy, do I love that song there, Bill Haley and the Comets, Rock Around the Clock. When I was a kid, that was one of the songs I was singing. I used to get up there and do a little Rock Around the Clock, still continue to do it. And uh, what was another song I did? Uh, Johnny Ray, If Your Heart Cry. He'll Cry was a great song. But you talk about Bill Haley. I mean, he got started back where? In that little he started out little... doing country music. He had a yep. group called the, um, the Journeyman was his original group. Right. Bill Haley and the Journeyman. They recorded other songs. They recorded Rock and Beat and Boogie, See uh -huh. the Red Alligator. Right. And also, like 1954, that was one of the first two songs that crossed over to rock and roll. It was, it was Rock Around the Clock and it was Shaboom by the Chords. Mm -hmm. they're, the both, they're both considered to be the first songs to be the mainstream songs of rock and roll that reached the general public. Now, today, of course, we're saying, Paulie, that we are definitely doing some of this stuff about the, about these, uh, about the names that come first right. and so forth and so on. But, you know, in a movie, they're called the Judy Garland picture. You know, they had that uh, uh, the movie. What was it? Wizard of Oz. Over the Rainbow. Yeah, Over the Rainbow. Now she had, I think she had it, or the Bad West. Or somebody was wearing red shoes. It was Dorothy. And was it Dorothy that had the red shoes? But I'm gonna I'm gonna mention this. Everybody, you know, they all like to get this memorabilia. They buy the memorabilia. But I just want to mention that you were one of the guys that bought Dorothy's <laughs> shoes from the movie. Because uh, can you show them in the movies? Uh, you show Paul, there's the shoes from the, shoe the Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Those, those are shoes that Dorothy actually wore and now have been stretched into this size. Actually, Mickey, uh, I got them from The Temptations, if you want to really be honest, be honest with you. Yeah. I got them from The Temptations. I think you were tempted and took it off The Temptations' feet. That's what I think happened over there. But anyway, those are great looking shoes, Paul. Thank you, Mickey. Yeah. You know, some of these names, they really get you confused because, you. you know, years ago you had The Chimes. Right. And then all of a sudden became Lenny Coco and The Chimes. You had uh, the Elegance, right. and then became Vito Bacone and the Elegance. Elegance. You had uh, the Cadillacs, right. then became and Speedo and the Cadillacs. Cadillacs. The, we're going to talk more about them later, though, yeah. the Cadillacs. But you know what I wanted to say, Mickey? You know why I think a lot of the group, like the Chimes, did the excellence? Because the lead singer was the only original member who was still performing in the group. That's why I think they put their name out front. Well, also what happened, Paul, because of the new music uh, 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 rules that took place in Congress, a lot of times the guys who had, you know, the group split up. Many, many times, Rainy and the Rainbows is a great example right, of right. that. When they split, all of a sudden there was a problem. The trademark was going to two different people. Right, was so it they had the, to distinguish Was it the, the lead singer? Was it the group? Who owns the trademark? And even that continues today, which is a lot of confusion for a lot of promoters. Because yeah. a lot of people will call you and say, you know, we own the trademark. Yeah, but you don't have an original member in the group. I know, it's a very confusing thing. It's a thing. very confusing very thing confusing for us. Like but anyway, is. the groups are out there, they're appearing. And that's the, the main thing. Right. Lee Andrews and the Hearts. They were called Lee Andrews. And always. Hearts. They weren't always. just the Hearts. No, never just the Hearts. It was always Lee Andrews and the Hearts. What I loved about this guy, and we, we speak about him all the time. Yeah, we do. He's a great guy. Yeah, he has that feel. He's got that laid back. He was laid back. Very, very course, smooth, smooth. Very smooth. Very suave guy. Did the Nat King Cole type sound. He did, yep. He loved Nat King Cole. Long, Long and Lonely Nights. Tell me about that song. This was um, originally done... In 1958, mm -hmm. um, it was their second hit record. Tear Drops was first in 57, then came this in 58, and then um, Try the Impossible was 59. Yeah. But remember, Mickey, they started recording back in the early 50s on Gotham Records when mm -hmm. they were doing some things like Bluebird of Happiness and Over the Rainbow and Maybe You'll Be There. You know, that was like oh, those are great 54. songs. So, and actually, Mickey, they recorded up through the 70s. They recorded here all different configurations of different groups. Almost like Fred Paris did. He changed with the musical styles of the time. Now, as you're talking, there's some things that happen. Maybe You'll Be There right. was originally recorded by who? Well, the Hearts. Okay. Did. And then later on, it comes out by? Billy and the Essentials. Billy and the Essentials, who had another name with the name of a group. Right. You also mentioned a song before, Try the Impossible, which also comes out with a group with a name of a guy <laughs> called Randy, Randy, Randy and the Rainbows. Rainbows. That's so, right, so this yeah. all correlates. But uh, let's watch it right now. Here's Lee Andrews and the Hearts right on TV with Long, Long and Lonely Nights. Long, long and lonely night I cry my 
I did right And why you left me with a broken heart Oh long, long and lonely nights Oh how I miss you my dear Please, please come back to me How I wish you were here Oh, 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 as I go along my lonely way I visualize pretty baby your beautiful face When I pass through my doorway What's left for me to face Oh, long, long and lonely night I guess you're never coming home to me Long, long and lonely nights Ever since you've been What a class guy, of course. Uh, yeah. Right there. What a great sound by him, huh? It is. I love, amazing love their music. Lee Andrews. What a great man. I tell you, that voice is so dynamic. Of course, you can see he was wavering a little bit as yeah. he was getting a little bit older and all, but just a gem. Those songs that he recorded out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania were just beautiful classic, songs. beautiful sounds. The arrangements were great, too. Yeah. Do you know this whole span of this rock and roll music, every week that we're on here, Paul, mm -hmm. we talk about some kind of different theme. Yes. And... Uh, it was so diverse. I mean, rock and roll. I mean, from the up tempo rockers to soul, slow ballads, the novelty songs. There was uh, so the, much. The hillbilly kind of stuff, the Elvis <laughs> Presley materials. It, it was such a huge market right. of the history of rock and roll, especially that street corner sound. Exactly. Now, I just want to bounce back to something I started talking about before talking about name changes in groups. Fred Paris yep. starts out as the Five Satins, of course. Mm -hmm. Then becomes Fred Paris and the Satins. Right. Then as a group, Fred Paris and the Restless Hearts. Then goes to Black Satin. And then it goes back to Fred Paris and the Five Satins. This is amazing, right? Yep. And the guy who got started back there, of course, when he didn't still at night, that was the being on duty and then right. looking the up army, at the sky right. in the army and looking at the stars and saying, boy, this night is still. And all of a sudden, there's yeah. another, the song another was great born. hit record. Yeah. One of the great songs of, of rock and roll, when you, when you talk about the Cadillacs, oh, man. who then becomes Speedo in the Cadillacs, right. Speedo O'Carroll, there was another class guy. Let me give you a little bit of history on that there. When they started out as the Cadillacs, the first song they recorded was Gloria. But then he wrote Speedo. Esther Navarro heard it and said, we got to put that in front of Cadillacs. It sounds so good together. So that's what made them Speedo and the Cadillacs. Yeah, and, and they did so many great songs. You talk about Gloria. Of course. Right? And that's Navarro writing it. And of course, originally, it was the Mills Brothers. Right. Right. Then, of course, you had the Cadillacs. Then you had the Passions and Beat on the list, Salutations. Beat on the Salutations. And the list went on. I mean, almost everybody had a I mean, record. Had Transfer did it too, Mickey. Glory as well. But they had other songs. They had the song Peekaboo, which I love. I love that Zoom. The Zoom. I mean, were, Mr. Johnson. I mean, it just right. went on. Wishing and on Well. And on. Wishing Well. It's Spring, The Girl I Love. But one of the most beautiful songs is a song called You Are. Which is my favorite Cadillac song. It's also Speedo's favorite Cadillac song. I don't know where this clip is from. It's from more recent songs that it's black and white. It's a really, really cool clip. Let's watch it now. Here they are, the Cadillacs. Favorite ballad was, they would probably say Gloria. But my favorite tune, we had the pleasure of recording in 1957. And it simply said, You are, you are so much better. 
What a great note, but of course, the late, great, <laughs> this is Beatle Earl Carroll. I'll tell you, what a sound. Huh? Now, let me tell you, Mickey, we watched Lee Andrews, then we watched him. Both class, class guys. Their presentation, their voice, everything about them. Yeah, just, it's amazing. And, the, and there was, there's no end to their songs. Betty, My Love. I mean, oh, it's and, another and, one. Another yeah. Song, yeah. Window Lady. I mean, oh, yeah, all this, that's right. Cadillacs had so many great songs on Josie. Yep. Right? Josie Jubilee record label. For about 10 years they recorded. Yeah. Them. They did a lot. For about 53 oh, to 63. Yeah. Tremendous, yeah. tremendous group. And you know what we're going to do? When we come back, we got more great sounds of rock and roll, more from the confusion of the group. Was the group's name the group and then become the lead singer's name? Or was the lead singer there before? You'll find out more about it when the Prince of Rock and Roll returns. So don't go away. We'll be right back. YesWeCare.net is a 501c3 charity that provides help to veterans and their families. Please visit YesWeCare.net and donate in any way you can by purchasing our beautiful frame prints or relaxation CDs and DVDs, even smooth jazz CDs. YesWeCare.net. Remember, our troops are on their way home. They need all the support they can get. YesWeCare.net. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is.
Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multi Medicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multi Medicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. If you find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multi Medicine and Rehabilitation, located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516 334 7000, or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. We're back right here with Mickey B on the Jukebox Review Tuesday night, Madhouse TV, and of course, what a great sound right there. We got people in the background from the windows are hanging out here asking us to play certain songs tonight. Could be win the window lady, like Cadillacs. Like the Cadillacs, the window lady, and we could do that too. But you know, Paulie, the confusion continues. I yes, mean, it does. We yeah. had a group called the Supremes. Right. Everybody knows Diana Ross and Supremes. Uh, people don't remember the miracles. They remember Smokey the Robinson, Robinson and the miracles. miracles. But they got started that way. Now, we were also a group uh, yes. that I sang with called Tico and the Triumphs. And you were always Tico and the Triumphs, Always right? Tico and the Triumphs. And uh, the truth of the matter is that most of our names weren't even our names. <laughs> it's Paul true. Simon wanted to come up with some kind of different name. He knew that they were the cars out there, like the Cadillacs and the little anti nipples sure. and all. So he wanted to take the Triumphs. But then he said, what do I do with the Triumphs? What name do I use? And he looked at the Tico record label. <laughs> oh, really? That's the Spanish. how he started. Yeah, okay. And oh, we wow. came up with the name Tico and the Triumphs. And that's how that started. Well, it's so funny. Another one, Randy and the Rainbows. He's not really Randy. He's no, Dominic. that's right. He's Dominic. And they took Randy and Rainbows. Same thing with Jane Americans. Right. His real name is David. But that was a real group, Jane Americans. It wasn't the Americans and then Jay. Right, right, but right. But it was David and he was Jay. Another one. Yeah. A in the Starlights. His real name is Bernard. Bernard. So why <laughs> these names of somebody else's name? Who knows, name? Mickey? Who knows? We don't know, but all we know is we got great music out that's, there. That's for sure. Now, here's, here's a song that goes back to about 1953. You could tell me a little bit about this. This might have been one of the first crossover records, too. Tell me a little bit about Otis Williams and the Charms. Actually, I got to correct myself what I said earlier. Shaboom and Rock Around the Clock was 54. I forgot. This is the first top 10 um, pop record by a black rhythm and blues vocal group that appealed to all all people, which is Hearts of Stone. Mm -hmm. And Otis Williams, as you're going to see, he sounds and looks incredible. This is from one of the PBS specials about nine, ten years ago. Okay, let's catch it right now. Here we go, the first hit record for the charms. Hearts made of stone.
Otis Williams and the Charms. And I'm going to tell you something. They look fantastic. Yeah, don't guys. they? Yeah. They yeah, those silk suits. The, the choreography is A couple is of dynamic. original guys in there, too. These guys are all from Cincinnati, huh? Yep. And let me tell you something. If you're watching us around the world or anywhere in the United States, get these guys booked because if you're in that Cincinnati area, these guys are tremendous. Maybe out in the California area, in the New York area. It's great music, great shows. Uh, and it puts, it puts a feeling in you. You love this kind of, of stuff. Of course you, know? you do, right. I always said it, Paulie. I don't know if this music didn't exist anymore. I don't know. I think we lose part of our life. I think so. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we all look for this music. We look for this fun. For the concerts coming up and, and the radio shows, up, our yeah. television show that people enjoy you so know, we much. You know, we got a concert coming up on June the 30th at Patrick Theater. You can get your tickets now because this next gentleman we're going to be uh, showing you is, is headlining the show. Uh, his name is, of course, Charlie Thomas' Drifters. Joining him is Shirley Alston Reeves of the Shirelles and the girls. We're bringing up the legendary teenagers, and they got two original teenagers in there, and also uh, Tiny Tim, uh, the original Tiny Tim, That's Tiny right. Wilson, uh, from, of course, Tiny Tim and Hits. He's coming up. And uh, we got Manhattan Skyline. The we Knockouts. Have the Knockouts are going to be there. A great group with Darling Lorraine. Uh, Cleveland Still in the Dubs. They're fantastic. Um, who else? I mean, I'm thinking of all those um, groups. Uh, Still in Style. You got right? Still in Style is going to be there. Somewhere in Time is coming out. A lot of so, groups. A lot yeah, of groups. For on tickets the show. and information, 516 822 9612. Or you could go to mickeyb.com, check out all the different shows and dances, and hopefully we'll put a little step in your life as well. <laughs> How's that? And Mickey, don't forget about May 3rd. May 3rd, just add it to our list. We're going to be at the Belmore Movies, uh, the show place, and on there is the Marcells coming in. With a special show, an hour, an hour, 15 minutes of watching these Marcells. Uh, joining them also a fabulous group from Long Island called The Accords. And also... The Styles. The Styles. Now, The Styles... An original group. Right, from school, uh, from school bells to chapel bells. The original group reunites the first time in 50 years will be on the stage that night. So you can also get tickets for that as well. The 516-822-9612. Paulie... Tell us a little bit about Charlie. Every time uh, we have uh, more Charlie stories and all, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet he in this is. business. He, Charlie is, is, is a terrific guy. I mean, the guy's been singing since 1956. Started out with the Five Crowns, of course, as you know, Mickey, and then they mm -hmm. evolved to the uh, second set of Drifters. Um, and, of course, Drifters had many, many membership changes throughout the years. You know, and Charlie's the... Um, not the last, because a couple of guys that are still left, but he's the most actively, actively performing of the original Drifters. And, of course, now he goes out as Charlie Thomas's Drifters. Right. And what happened was when you had the split, you had Bill Pinckney's Drifters. Right. And, uh, and then, of course, like Herb Reed's Platters. Right. And then all of a sudden it was Herb Reed, but now all of the Platters have, have passed on. Right. And, but you have... Uh, some other great groups that are out there, like these guys, Charlie Thompson. And, and Miggy, this clip, I picked one of my favorite Drifters songs. It's not Under the Boardwalk or Up on the Roof. It's I Count the Tears. Great song. Yes. Let's listen to it right now. Watch this.
Charlie Thomas and the Drifters, they'll be with us on June 28th at the Patchogue Theater. Make sure you get your tickets, 516-822-9612, or go to mickeyb.com. Do I love that group. Yes. They are so great. Charlie is a wonderful, wonderful, laid-back guy. His wife, Carol, a doll. Very, very nice and people. And this history of this music is just unbelievable. I remember being with the Drifters in, on a show in Camden, New Jersey in 1961. Wow. I was 15 and a half years old that time. <laughs> Charlie was there, uh, of course, uh, Rudy uh, Lewis. Uh, he was the lead singer at the time, right? Yeah, Doc Green, and also uh, Tommy Evans was the bass right. at that time. Those were the four guys that we had on stage. But let me tell you, it doesn't make a difference. No matter who comes out on stage on the Drifters, they are absolutely marvelous. They are. In fact, Mickey, that brings me to what I wanted to say to you. Charlie Thomas was in all those records in the background, but as what guys left, he stepped up to be the lead singer. Yes, and what's amazing about it is that no matter who became the lead singer, it always, always sounded always like the great. record. It always sounded <laughs> like the record. But Charlie did do some of the songs. When My Sweet Little Girl's Smiling. Sweet. Yeah, Sweets for My Sweet, sweet. Sugar Fine. And When My Little Girl. Well, didn't he do that one, one too? Yeah, didn't Charlie that's a great do one too. Yeah, that was great. And there was a couple other ones in there. I'm not sure if it was on Mexican Divorce or Yeah, or yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also yeah. like the stuff, just to jump a little bit later on, they did Tanger My Shoes and um, yeah. I'll Take You Home is another great one by oh, them too. That was a great song. That was Johnny Moore. Johnny Moore was just fantastic. I mean, his whole life. Expands from the very, very beginning. How do you like that? And left? comes all the way to the end when he's in England at the time. Yep. He he took the group God and came all back. the way to until he passed away about three years ago. He kept yeah. the group going all those yeah. years in England. Saturday yeah. night at the movies and Sand in My Shoes and all those great, great stuff. Songs. Yeah, Mickey. Tell me about this guy. Uh, George George Grant, Grant, right? Mickey. And the Castells. Let me tell you. They were the first group from Philadelphia to make it. We're going back to 1953 now. We're going all the way, all the way back. I mean, the Angels and the Hearts were influenced by George Grant and the Castells. Mm -hmm. All these other groups we talk about, like the Orleans and Danny and the Juniors, they all come later on, but now George Grant and the Castells. Now, this show here, we're going to see now, from 1996, I was there. It was a UGHA show. It was a Hall of Fame honoring show. And when he came on stage, everybody thought they were playing the record. Mm -hmm. They thought they dropped the needle on a record player. This, this guy sounded exactly like the records. Now, in this particular clip, he's with two of the other original Castells and the four guys that are the chefs do the background. Of course, the Castells were a six-member group. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear the guy who's doing the high tenor. He's the original high tenor on the records. Now, here they are doing a beautiful, beautiful song from 1953 called Heavenly Father, George Grant and the Castells.
Thank you. George Grant and the Castells, Heavenly Father, and what a voice on that guy. The guy, uh, let me tell you something. When I was there at that show, everybody thought he was lip syncing. Yeah. It sounded just like the record. One of the people I want to thank, of course, is, uh, has passed on. Ronnie I. Ronnie I. What he did for the industry with UGHA and, and brought, brought all back, these people back. Mickey. Yeah, all of, all of the people that people hadn't heard of, and they right. recreated back on his stage, and of course, you got to thank also T.J. Lipinski for putting on all oh, those great shows. On PBS specials, public, yeah. Public service uh, specials, and, and it's out there. And, of course, all the promoters, the guys that go out there and do all of these great shows, the artists and the people who sell this music, anybody invite, in, in, involved. involved with all these great groups, you know. What we're going to do is take a little break. When we come back, we got another group of, did the name come first? Did the group come first? How did it all work out? You'll find out more about it right here. On Mickey Beach Jukebox Review and Madhouse TV, don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act One Entertainment. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and Ronkakuma, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. We're back here with Mickey B on the Jukebox Review, another Tuesday night. And, of course, every week you'll catch some of the history of, of rock and roll. We take you back in time with some of the writers, producers, and, of course, the entertainers and anybody to do with this fabulous music. Tonight is a night where we have a little bit of confusion. <laughs> Tonight, did the group come first? Did the name of the artist come first? 
or did the artist come on the back side of it, or who knows where it came from, right? Right, we got to figure it out. Like, you talk about a group called the Primates. Yes. <laughs> who then become the Supremes. Right. Who then become Diana yeah. Ross and the Supremes, right? Very interesting, yep. Now, the only one that didn't change that I know from that, from that is the Temptations, right? There were always the Temptations. Always Temptations, but there's no name with the Temptations. No. But there was a name with the Miracles. Right. And that was Smokey Robinson, the Miracles. And it's funny, Mickey, like you said, the Primates were the Supremes. The Matadors were the Miracles before they became the Miracles. That was their original name. Right. And the Primes were the Temptations, temptations. right? Yeah. So that's what happens there. But anyway, uh, a group from Philadelphia. It's so funny. Bouncing back to Philadelphia again. Because, look, we had Leandres in the Hearts from Philadelphia. We had George Grant and the Castells from Philadelphia. Now we have Billy and the Essentials from Philadelphia. Now what this shows you is the different styles of doo and rock and roll that came out of Philadelphia. Yep. And this lead singer, his name is Billy Carlucci. Yes. Right? They were also friends with the Four J's. Right. But the Four J's didn't have any names. No, they were just the Four J's. The four J's. That was the name of the group. But anyway, let's watch this one. Uh, maybe you'll be there, of course. The Four J's, right? Are they doing this one? No, this is Billy and the Essentials. Oh, Billy and the Essentials doing it. A song they took because Lee and the Hearts did it first, and they did their own arrangement to it. And the name of the song? Maybe you'll be there. That's what I said. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Billy Carlucci. Billy and the Essentials. Good evening. How y'all doing? Maybe you'll be there Maybe you'll be there with Mickey B, the Prince of Rock Roll, Paul Ranti. We want to wish the best to my co-host down in Florida, Frankie yes. B, who is uh, relaxing at, at, for the next couple of days. And uh, Frankie, we know you're under the weather a little bit, but God bless you. We know you're going to be fine. And, yep. and I want to also send a, a real blessing to our friend Kenny Vance. Yeah, Mickey. Who is uh, recuperating, and hopefully Kenny will be back in, in, the, summertime. in the summertime, back on the stages with, uh, with Mickey B and and others. So, Kenny, uh, we know you're out there. Hopefully, uh, somebody will tell you about the show and you'll catch us on Madhouse TV during the course of the week. One thing about this show, Paulie, even though people can see it live right now, they can see it for the next month or anytime, forever right. at any time they want in the archives. Just go to madhousetv.com, click on Mickey B's Jukebox Review, hit the show, and we are on the air. Yes. Tell me a little bit about Kenny Vance and the Planetones. <laughs> Did, they name, did his name come first or after the Planetones? Actually, technically, the group was formed in American Hot Wax. They were Professor LaPlano and the Planetones first. Correct, in the movie American Hot Wax. And then after then, when he formed the group years later, it became Kenny Vance and the Planetones. And of course, he's known for this song, naturally, that he wrote in 1975 called Looking for an Echo. Here it is, right now. Catch it. <laughs>
at Erasmus All high school We used to harmonize Me and Benny and Ira And two Italian guys We were singing oldies But they were newies then And today when I play my old 45s I remember In a subway, in a lobby, or a hall Crowded in a doorway, singing doo-wops to the wall And if we went to a party, and they wouldn't let us sing We'd lock ourselves in the bathroom, and nobody could get in Cause we were looking for an echo An answer to our sound, a place to be in harmony, a place we almost found. And the girls would gather round us, and our heads would really swell. We'd sing songs by the moon lows, the hot tones. Gray Kenny Vance and the Planetones. And of course, I gave him the second start really? on my radio show here on WGBB when I had Richard Nader on the show. Wow. And I invited Kenny Vance to come down. And, uh, and they spoke. They knew each other from years ago. Mm -hmm. And Richard invited him back to Nassau Coliseum and started Kenny back on right. the last 20 some odd years yep, uh, exactly. of doing it. So, Kenny, come on back and let's get you ready here in a couple of months from now. That's right. Paul, we got time for probably one, one more, more clip. thing. And this is a special one. Again, this is a group that originally was the name of the group. Then later on, they put the lead singer's name in front of it. And that was Vita Picotta and the Elegant. But instead of them singing, everybody's seen them sing Little Star right. hundreds of times. This clip is from the Beacon Theater from about 1981, 1982. Doing something you would not expect to hear the elegant sing. They do an a cappella, a great Rudy West and the Five Key song, Out of Sight, Out of Mind. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say goodbye to you now. Next week, catch us here again, 8 o'clock to 9 on MadhouseTV.com. And check us out at www.MickeyB.com for all our upcoming shows. From Mickey B. Paul Arante. And Frankie D. down in Florida. God bless all of you. We'll see you next week. Out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. So the story goes. You forgot I exist. My broken heart. Out of sight, out of mind. You found someone new. 
But I can't change my love The way that you I sit around wondering, wondering about your new affair. I should forget to remember and remember not to care. I'd forget if I could. Oh. But my 